Hello everyone, uh, you welcome back to this uh, IGCSC ICT tutorial session and today we'll be talking at uh, the system life cycle that's chapter 7 so um, <coughs> uh, basically the objectives uh, for this chapter will look at uh, the different stages in the development or in the life cycle of uh, any system at all I mean every system in life uh, you know has uh, some sort of uh, stages you have to go through to uh, eventually develop the system so mm -hmm. we will start with um, analysis we'll go to design development implementation documentation and finally um, uh, evaluation so let's see how this takes place now the first thing uh, we need to understand is um, what is system life cycle what is yeah what is it all about so at some point uh, you know maybe in an industry it could be your computer at some point your computer becomes obsolete like it's old it is not doing what you want it to do so there is need for you to maybe upgrade or completely maybe some in some cases if you have like a desktop you might want to change your uh, add on to your RAM, change your graphics card and all those um, video card and all those kind of things and uh, but in this uh, uh, case we're looking at um, a whole like a full system maybe you have a computer network or maybe you have an industrial setup actually operating or a database those kind of things so that's those are things we'll be trying to look at so um, at some point you always need to update your system maybe to meet a new uh, needed requirement uh, which the old system cannot meet uh, an example is maybe uh, a company wants to upgrade its entire computer system now uh, we will be looking at uh, there are several processes uh, from the analysis of the old system to the development and eventually you implement the system the new system which is uh, more efficient and uh, than the old system so Definitely, if you are moving from your old thing, you want something new and better than what you had previously. So, uh, over time, as the system is being developed from the analysis, design, development, testing, implementation, the system is ev uh, evaluated. That's why it is a system life cycle. So, it goes around. And at some point, you like during the design, you design develop and test go back to the design like uh, re-optimize till you get uh, what you want now let's uh, get into the stages and look at it briefly before we dive deeply into them individually now for the first stage we're looking at the uh, analysis yeah. well basically at uh, the analysis level uh, it involves observations like you observe the existing system so if you are looking at an old computer system you want to upgrade you have to observe the system or oh, what are the properties of the different computers what is the size of the RAMs what is the storage capacity how what are the speeds and all those things so you collect that information and then you identify problems oh is this are the computers slow or uh, is there a problem with a, a particular problem with the computer so identifying the problems and then from there you can be informed on what you need to do to upgrade that system now at the level of the design stage it uh, generally involves the design of a novel system so from the problems you've identified now you can design a new system to solve the problems now uh, <coughs> Uh, you also consider how the corrections will be validated so you need to be careful when you plan the design how do you va validate that your design meets the requirements of the new system and then from there uh, the development and testing stage will take place so you just develop your design and then you test when you develop and test you go back and check your design and are you meeting the requirements and the design implementations and all those things and then finally you go to once your design and requirements are made you implement the system so you implement the system to replace the old system and then finally once you have a system like your laptop or whatever you have even calculators that have a documentation like the when you buy something new 
there's usually something like a documentation maybe a small booklet a leaflet a pamphlet or whatever it is to tell you how to use that system so documentations are always very important even at the level of the analysis stage later on as we move on you'll find out that you need to actually read documentations to analyze the system and then evaluation now you evaluate the system to see if it meets the original requirements and if necessary maintenance now uh, the first stage we'll look at is analysis stage at the level of the analysis stage uh, as i earlier said it uh, has some uh, sub stages uh, firstly you a system analysis actually who is involved in this you know, to analyze stages that people who are specialized in doing this core system analysis who need to research the current system to find out the necessary changes to be made so um, within the analysis stage there are a number of things that can happen there is research that you have the, the analyst researches the current system identifies the input and outputs necessary uh, that are happening in the system what are you entering into your system what is coming out what processes take place or when you enter something what happens for something to come out maybe um uh, you type in letters on your keyboard and you expect to see what maybe on a word document so that's a um, kind of a system so and then what are the problems with the current system what is the problem maybe the computer systems are slow so how do you solve that problem and then what user requirements for the new system maybe uh, you're having offering services or the company is offering services to customers maybe customers are complaining oh this your system has become slow or this thing is like this so you, you you try to optimize the news or you research the new system and see how uh, from the analysis you can improve and then what information is required what information do you need maybe interviewing people looking around and all those things for you to have a thorough analysis of that system <coughs> and then now after the system analyst investigates the new system the existing system and uh, works and he, he uh, the analyst looks into how to re-engineer that system to meet the new system requirement and the various things that happen or what how the analysis is done is by observations questionnaires interviewing users or workers of that system and then you can okay examine and study in existing documentation so these are the four thing ways uh, system analysts carry out uh, analysis of an uh, existing system now let's look at how uh, to research or investigate a current system the first way observation how do you do that if you have a system a computer system if for you to be an analyst in that area you need to understand how computers operate what does what in the computer so all those things so you observe find out how existing stuff to find out how it works and what is the advantage of using um, this kind of um, uh, analysis it's a kind of relatively cheap and reliable method to collect current system information analysts can get a better overall view of the system and in terms of disadvantages personnel might be uncomfortable being watched so in some cases some companies some people might have uh, observed or experienced this someone comes around to observe the place your work where people are working and all those things so that they can improve maybe on i mean uh, working conditions and all those kind of things and then another way is also to get interviews you interview people who make use of that system or the customers so um uh, that's a way of um analysis and then in terms of advantages uh, uh analysts can prop for better feedback from system users you know things might be happening but and you can understand from that observation point and understand what happened but someone who actually makes use of that system can give you better feedback of the system disadvantages wise time number then you can always do the reading and then often it's time consuming maybe you have an, a company with 100 employees interviewing all those people might not be that easy so that is just one downside to it but it's also an effective method to gather information and then we have questionnaires you send out questionnaires to people clients uh, to find out their views on the existing system and performance and 
you can kind of streamline it to have specific questions to address uh, maybe they look into how to address the needs of a new system and in terms of advantages we are looking at uh, individuals can remain anonymous and you're also looking at this also fairly faster so you can send out multiple questionnaires at a time compared to the interviews and then in terms of disadvantage we're looking at questionnaires may not be all written so there's no room for follow-up you don't know who did who said what so that's where the interviews become more advantageous and then looking at exi existing documentation so you can always read up, read up what has been documented and from there you make more informed decisions to optimize a new system so this method uh, the advantage is that analysts can see clearly how system operates missing technical information can also be gotten and then in terms of disadvantages uh, can be time consuming so there's a reading you know that some instruments or if it's a whole system you might have a really big book for or several several books depending on the parts of the system explaining to you how the system works now uh, still at the level of the analysis steps after the system uh, research uh, like you've uh, the analyst has completed the research the information is gathered the system analyzes the current system problems and information from research to come up with what a new system design so this moves us toward the design stage so the design will also what consider the necessary hardware the software and software needed to overcome the limitation of the what existing system so these are just highlights of what we were explaining later i was explaining the previous slide researching the new system record and analyze information about the current system then you further find out system specification input output open system application software analyze storage requirements because here we're kind of considering a computer system and now uh, at the level of the divine design stage after uh, after a thorough analysis of the current system the system analysis what uses the current system problems to do to create a design so an effective design stage for a new computer system will consider the following how the files containing data will be structured and format of data types stored in the file this files the data types that were required from users or needed now how the data entered into the system will be validated to meet required standards how data capture forms will be used to capture data from users so when you go online maybe you're filling a form there is a particular format they need to give you which will help them to easily gather their data and do uh, use it for whatever purpose it uh, for whatever intended purpose now also thing also is uh, the, another thing is output what output formats do they want or do they want from the new system so in the design all these things need to be taken into place file structure and data structure uh, data input formats and data capture form system output formats and what are the validation routines how do you know that the data uh, maybe if they give you a form enter your name how do you know that is name name text so those kind of things uh, are important at the level of the design stage so still so the the <coughs> in considering the data and the file structures uh, the format of data type stored in these files is so very important um, uh, for a typical file is made up of what records with each record having what different fields so a unique field which is usually a primary key is used to what identify different records so each record must be, must be totally defined by describing field names field land data types field codes and unique field for primary keys now at this level like this is a record maybe you have a record of uh, let's say this information about um, uh, this is a file structure yeah this is a file structure um, uh, where you have the fields this is a field this is a field this is a field and this is a record so a record will give you information about maybe a user let's say this company wants to produce computer specific for users so the record this user is has this id or user code and then maybe this is a subscription year this is a product plan maybe they are selling some yeah 
uh, specific things customers this is the plan they are on and all those things so this is a record of all the information about a customer and this is a field a field is like something specific to or it's a general combination of information about different people but a record is about a single individual uh, individual so you learn more about this uh, kind of things in databases and uh, that's where all this uh, uh, you see a lot of this now uh, data input format data capture forms how do you input data is it by typing is it by voice and all those things have to be considered in the design and then output how do you output the data is it text is it images and all those things have to be uh, considered what are the validation routines how do you validate that data entered is correct for instance if i have a field user code how do you know that the code entered uh, is is good so you can have a validation routine like a code is uh, maybe 10 10 um, 10 characters combination of letters and numbers so that is like a validation routine and then year of subscription it cannot be a year of subscription you can put a validation routine that it must be a number four digit number so those are validation routines and uh, okay i think moving on uh, still uh, at the level of the design this is like a data entry form uh, maybe you want to enter your first name there should be a validation routine to check that oh this is a name surname and all those things salary it should be money address there should be a way to address address uh, text and numbers and then maybe you want to write something here generally it should be text numbers and characters and all those things so um uh, we've discussed more of this data capture form can be used so this is a data capture form you can actually use to input data uh, so data capture form can either be paper based or electronic depending on the need there are some cases where people can actually fill out information or the pen and the system just scans that information and captures it so uh, all of this have to be uh, like analyzed by the analyst and considered when doing the system design so that different data types common feature on data capture forms are adequate space so you need adequate space to enter your data clear indication of purpose of the form like text boxes tick boxes clear fonts and all those things so have tips filling the form so yeah maybe first name they can give you a tip there oh, first name is this they can give you text uh, it is must be text and all those things and then control buttons in some cases maybe they say year instead of allowing you to type they can give you a list of years and you just select from there and then double entry boxes for verification maybe you have to type your email address and then very like verify that email address so those are also things to be considered when designing or trying to create a new system to computer system now uh, also data types uh, we have logic uh, integer character numeric and those are things to also consider during the design what data types are important and in which area will they be applied now uh, at the level of the design check um, design stage uh, also uh, in terms of data capture uh, we we'll look at some validation checks like how do you do uh, validation techniques or routines uh, one of which is learn check so learn check basically checks if enter data meets required number of characters so like i said you could have uh, uh, a field where you um, yeah a field where you need to enter like 10 characters so um, this learn it is a learn check that is used to check the length of those characters and then uh, for instance validating the login id as six character like your password and all those things they use learn checks to check against the characters and then we have range check so checks if enter data within the required range such as maybe where you need to enter your age and um, if they say there's an age limit maybe between 18 and 30 years so any age out of this range becomes uh, a red flag and then format check checks if enter data is in the right format so ensure that date uh, date of a user that's an issue your date of a user is entered so if you are a user of a system or maybe they require for your uh, date of birth depending on whatever system you're dealing with some will have month before years 
but like if it is D more than year so you need to enter the information correctly in that format and there's a format checker to check that and then we have presence check checks if required data has been entered into a field so that on field they will highlight with a star like required field so that one must be filled so this is the presence check that does that uh, like first and last name and then type and the character check checks which checks if the data the data you've entered is correct for the field so uh, only numbers in the numeric field like age and all those things so uh, the type of character check actually checks don't enter text where you're supposed to enter just numbers and all those things so that is uh, uh, those are things that um, makes the design stage uh, critical so from the validation of entire data the output format such as reports how do you want your data to look when you complete complete it maybe you're creating uh, a system where you want to capture information and display a form maybe when the person is browsing and all those things how do you want it to look uh, you could design that and all those things so you need to consider um, sizes of fields the clear description appropriate from display efficient space utilization, and proper fitting of data and printout so once you capture data you need to make sure that the spaces you are locating for maybe names all those things should be long uh, should be um to be uh, enough to capture or uh, carefully print out that data in a clear uh, format you don't have uh, cut off text and all the like so that is what uh, this is mainly to do now in the third stage after you, are, you must have done your design the next thing is to develop like develop and test that design and from the previous diagram uh, the initial diagram we saw the designs development and testing stage works uh, kind of a loop together with the design stage so when you do development and during the testing stage you find that there's a problem you go back to your design and re-optimize that problem go back to the development testing that is how a system is engineered so uh, development and finalizing on the five structures databases data types linking fields together that is basically development you're putting the parts together and from your design so validation of the store of captured data and files for accuracy so your development of the necessary hardware and software for the user interface for easy and accurate data collection so if you use a so we are dealing with the software system you need to develop that software system file structures databases uh, data types uh, linking fields together to meet the needs of the new required system and continuous optimization <coughs> to make sure that uh, the 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 new system or the developed system meets the design and the requirement so validation routines to also you have to ensure to that capture data is accurate and meets the required standards develop hardware and software modules to form what the user interface as we showed before in the design now still in the development and testing uh, there are different ways uh, this could happen. So the system module is continuously tested and modified to ensure meet required standards. As I've, uh, that's what I was stressing on earlier on. So uh, you could have module one. You modify the module. You test it. You go back just like that. When it, 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 you, you validate the module that is working, you go to module two, modify, test, module three, just like that. And at the end of the day, you can combine the whole module and test the whole system as a whole. And after testing, if you find that there is a problem, you go back, optimize, redesign, and till this is like modular testing till you get the required uh, or what the the desired outcome for your system or desired performance for your system so that is how the development and testing stage work it works together with the design stage <coughs> now uh, still at the level of the development and testing there are certain things also you need to take uh, note of or which are very important formulating a test plan so it's always very important if you're a developer and you want to test one you have to test uh, develop a test plan because you might think that your oh my test test uh, development and testing has actually worked but 
that was it is usually based on the test plan uh, test plan you try to implement if the test plan is not robust you might ignore certain things and they end up uh, being a problem in the long run long run so you can have like a list of all the tests to be carried out what test criteria and data is to be used for the testing what kind of live data is most suitable for the test what are the expected outcomes from the test how do you know if the test outcomes might expect the result so these are questions you need to ask yourself or be when you're doing the design now three types of data can be tested during input of data field for instance normal data so normal data is generally known as uh, acceptable or a valid data with known outcome so that is normal data then we also have such as your age you should be any whole number between this and this so you cannot have an uh, you cannot be right in most cases you will not see somebody saying oh i am um, eight and a one quarter year or whatever it is most of the times what daily age is usually given as a whole number now extreme data are the limits of acceptable side value so that's extreme data so if you want 10 and then you're having something 20 and then at this corner you have five so that will, those are extremes and then uh, abnormal data data that one is completely out of a uh, limit or a, a, a certain acceptable range so if you have a range maybe between 10 to 20 and you have some other data 30 and one so the one and the 30 is abnormal so uh, those are also things you test for like uh, data uh, types of data you test during uh, your system design and uh, in the fourth stage we're looking at implementing the system design once uh, once your test must have been conducted and so it uh, turns out successful successfully now implementing uh, the implementation stage you're implementing that system implementing the system means maybe if you uh, you created a new computer system or you take the computer system to where it has to op uh, it function so you imp have to implement it and the implementation usually comes in different ways for instance imagine a company let's say producing uh, um, I don't know producing computers the company cannot just decide to I don't know shut down for a whole year to implement a new system things don't happen like that that's a lot of losses that a company is going to incur so that's why we are going to go through a number of different ways approaches different companies take to implement uh, a new system the first one being direct change over uh, in this one the old system is what immediately replaced with a new new one so i uh, think this one will happen in like small size companies or yeah something that is easily replaced maybe within a day and then the advantages is it reduces cost of operation since one system is used then it has immediate benefits like if you use your system immediately and then disadvantages is disastrous if new system fails yeah becomes a really big problem in case that system fails and you've removed the old one so what do you do inadequate training time for staff so at times the new system is uh, that requires the, you know, the staff should be trained on how to use it and then um, a second uh, method of implementation is usually parallel running meaning you run the old and the new system together until the new system what completely takes over this uh, has the advantage as there is always backup so you have old and new taking running then you have staff you can gradually change uh, train your staff over time and then in terms of disadvantages it's costly to run two systems together so i mean at the end of the day you figure out which is best or uh, uh, which way is best to implement that system and then time consuming as the time needs to be duplicated for both systems now another one is pilot implementation the pilot implementation means that the new system is what implemented one department or company branch so maybe you have a company with uh, which is kind of multinational or in multiple cities they can decide to test to start implementing that uh, design in a particular location and if it works they take it to the, to the other location and just like that that is pilot um, uh, uh, implementation 
and then advantages failure of the new system affects just a part of the company so it doesn't affect the whole company so it's less costly staff can be trained in just one area now if any modification in terms of disadvantages any modification are made to the system staff may need to be retrained so that's a problem and then time consuming to implement the system in every department now we also have phased implementation new system is what implemented part by part so if you have a system with different phases you can decide oh let's replace the first phase of the system or the first part of the system good next part just like that and it's like a modular kind of implementation approach so once you do that me, the advantage is the new system can be as, uh, assessed before expanding failed part can easily be replaced or modified and then disadvantage is why it's more expensive than direct methods as each phase has to be what evaluated before introducing the new next stage and it's also time consuming now at the level of the final stage documentation technical and uh, user documentations must be developed after the implementation of the uh, uh, the, 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 the new system so as I earlier mentioned you must develop a documentation to do what to keep track how does the system work how can a user access the system how can the system be maintained and all those kind of things and then user documentation designed to it what user use the new system with ease so uh, uh, it also helps to like when do you need an expert to look or to check out the system? What are some ways to troubleshoot the system? All those things. So uh, for user documentation, for instance, uh, you have so documentation. Uh, you have a user documentation, a technical documentation. So as the name says, for users, technical is like for maintenance and all those things. And then uh, the user documentation will contain a purpose of the system. What does it do? How to gain access to the system? How do you maybe enter data into the system, scanning, typing, and all those things? How to save files or documents, input and output formats, how to generate output, error messages, and how do you troubleshoot those messages? And then definition of some key terms. And then when you go to technical documentation, we're looking at software and how uh, software hardware specification, which the users might not be able to understand and then purpose of new system file structure databases few names data types and all those things then we have system flowcharts which might will give you like a, a flowchart of how the system works and then input and output formats errors and troubleshooting methods and then system variables what need to be changed and all those things um the, at the level of uh, the final stage which is evaluation so you carry out what they call a careful system evaluation uh, uh, and necessary maintenance or modifications are carried out so during this stage every aspect of the system is what evaluated to meet what the new system requirements any limitations must be corrected so it means after even uh, after um, documentation or after implementation it doesn't mean you're finished there's the evaluation at the end of the day so to be in the user any limitation must be correct if necessary there's what redesign of system components and re-evaluation so usually questionnaires or interviews can be used to gather information on new system efficiency ease of use and quality of outputs that way uh, the company or the owner actually knows if what he paid for is actually working so that's also a way you can validate if you get a uh, maybe upgrade your computer system this is a way you actually validate it so as i always say these are practical things things we do maybe unconsciously every day or you don't know that so everything you do kind of has a life cycle if you kind try to look at it critically or from this point of view and now compare the new implemented system what with the required standards that's how the evaluation takes place you look at user experience and identify any limitation of the new system based on what they are saying and maybe you to your observations and then evaluate user responses and make adequate changes if necessary so that's the evaluation stage now let's uh, look at some questions so um this is from 2020 2018 so this is just one of those giveaway 
equations so they are like uh, Carlos is designing a new computer system to replace an existing system tick for items which will need to be de designed in a computer system what can I design data the we've mentioned uh, data capture form input to the current system no you don't want to design uh, during the designing a new computer system you don't need input to the current current system you want input to a new system data capture forms yes you need data capture form report layout you need it limitation of the system you don't need that the observation method that is what you do at the analysis stage improvement to the system still analysis say user information requirement analysis stage validation routines yes file structure yes Next, before the system is uh, implemented, see a continuation of the question. It needs to be tested. Different types of what test data are used to test the system. An example of test data is what live data. Actually, made mention of live data at some point. Uh, describe what is meant by live data. So, uh, basically, um, this is a two mark question. Anyway, when you get two marks question, it actually entails so it requires you to give two points, two good points. So firstly, you could say data has uh, like when we talk about live data, we're looking at uh, data that has been used uh, with the current system and is created for test purposes. So you, live data is like you create it to use it to test if a system works. That's when you can you use live data for. And then the result of the live data are what already known. Maybe it's like live data. I want to test if my calculator is working well say one plus one i expect to see two if i get three that's abnormal so that's kind of live data you need to know the results and, and then the next one is the continuation following the implementation of the system technical documentation needs to be written identify three components of te technical documentation which are not found in user documentation so indirectly differences between technical and user documentation you need to take note what goes into what now first uh, you could look at file structures program language uh, programming language programming flow chart program flow chart you could have system flow chart uh, you could also have list of uh, the different variables test runs uh, how to run the system validation routines and all those things so these are things that go into the technical documentation and uh, another question 2021 uh, this one uh, they say the owner of a uh, tower hotels is planning a new computerized booking system there are 10 tower hotels throughout the world the current booking system allows people to book rooms in any of the seven tower hotels. he has employed a system analyst to research the current system and then install the new system when an analyzing the current booking system the system analyst must what identify the user requirements explain why it is important for the system analyst to do this why is it important to identify the user requirement why would you want to know what the user requires ask yourself that question i mean uh, so the first thing you could say is the analyst will be what creating a new system specific to tower hotel so you need to know what do the users require in that uh, hotel and then a new system needs to be what customized to meet the user requirements yes and then the system could what should be what more efficient than than, than the existing one that is why he's getting user requirement maybe they used to be this and the users want a new thing so that's where the efficiency comes in and then cost can be reduced if new sy systems uh, use existing hardware and software so from the user requirement he can know if oh are we changing out the whole system or we are kind of implementing just in certain aspect or parts or adding on to the existing system so uh, these are some reasons and maybe many more why a user requirement needs to be identified by the system analyst and then uh, another question um, <coughs> looking at this, uh, the, the B part of the first uh, relevant stage so here you take the relevant stage of system life cycle of each of the following activities so uh, the first one at the analysis stage what do you do you identify the problems with the current system so that is why this is tick during the development testing you don't identify from evaluation you don't comparing the solution with the original tax requirements you do that at the evaluation stage and uh, yeah 
uh, create the file structure you create the file structure at the level of the development create develop identify the limitations in the new system and improvements to be made evaluation so at the level of the evaluation this don't mistake this for analysis no you identify the of the new system new system not old system and if you know the old system it will go for analysis but new system is for evaluation so make uh, always keep an eye for this kind of uh, tricky ways now they said before the new booking system is installed the system manually has to what decide on a method of implementation one method of implementation is what pilot running name two other methods of implementation and describe two benefits of each easy question First, you could talk about direct changeover, you could talk about by uh, this one is parallel running, you could talk about parallel running, and uh, I mean the other ones we mentioned. So, uh, in terms of benefits of direct changeover, you could talk about immediate benefits. Yeah, it has immediate benefits, you actually use what you want immediately, and then it's also less costly as fewer staff are needed. Direct changeover if you have uh, parallel running, you're running two systems at the same parallel running, for instance you find that it can't call you got to be you have to change multiple but then benefits of parallel running by the way you have all system can be used as backup if system fails that can be gradually trained on using the new system so we've looked at this so <coughs> take half this in mind and uh, generally i'll say uh, um, questions from chapter seven are usually kind of simple uh, uh i think this is a question we just looked at and uh, there are tons of questions out there even uh, you can also look at that uh, even in the textbook you should find more questions and uh, thank you for <laughs> thank you for following and uh, see you in the next video tutorials <coughs> let me know in the comment section if you have any comments thank you and uh, see you next time out.